This is Sean Ryu and I'm back with another gear review. I'm gonna actually be going over some gear, but also in addition to that, just kind of talking about some pros and cons in regards to uh, different types of stoves that are available, options, and you know what I personally prefer and why. I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm not claiming that my way is better than anybody else's way. Uh, I figured I'd need to put that disclaimer out there, but I do want to kind of share what I prefer and why I prefer it. But before I do, I want to just kind of talk about different type of stove options. Uh, a lot of people probably that have been doing backpacking are familiar with a lot of these. Uh, this is probably more for people that aren't. Uh, but I also want to kind of talk about some weight uh, savings and how you can shave weight and benefits, pros and cons and those type of things. So let me go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I want to do is kind of talk about alcohol. Well, before I go into alcohol stoves, I'll actually go into canister stoves. Uh, this is what's called a Snow Peak Light Max. Uh, if I remember correctly, I want to say it weighs 1.9 ounces, maybe 1.8 ounces. If when I'm backpacking and using this, uh, I don't carry the stuff sack. I feel like it's a waste of it just it serves no purpose. I'm one of those kind of people where if it doesn't serve a purpose, I really don't carry it. Uh, so I get rid of that. Uh, but this is a Light Max. Uh, this is actually a fuel regulator, so you can actually regulate uh, how much fuel is coming out, which then determines how much uh, or how hot this thing gets. Um, you've got your pot stands right here. You just fold these out. Um, this is actually going to sit on top of your canister. Uh, you screw it in, you stick your pot on top. I know I got a pot around here somewhere. And that's how you're going to cook and then you obviously use this to regulate your stove. Uh, this has been a, a great stove. I don't have any complaints about it. Uh, Snow Peak makes great products. Um, if I remember correctly, this is probably one of the lighter uh, canister stove options that are available. I think there's another one by Oil Can or Oil Camp or one of those companies uh, that just recently came out with one that's just a little bit lighter than this. Um, I think it has a better, it's better at regulating heat uh, in comparison to this one, but you know. I've enjoyed this one. I really have started using this more for camping versus backpacking. And there are several reasons why. Uh, one is, is I don't like canister stoves uh, for backpacking. And the reason why is several different reasons. One is because one, uh, this itself, if I remember correctly, weighs about 7.5 ounces, maybe almost eight ounces. Uh, you've got four ounces of fuel and this is a 110 gram canister. So basically what that means is, is you're carrying unnecessary weight even after you've used all your fuel because you're not going to leave this behind. You're going to pack this out uh, versus using another some of the other options that I'll talk about. So you're carrying unnecessary weight, uh, not to mention the fact that as you use your fuel, you really don't know how much is left in here. Um, I know for me that with this Light Max, I get a total burn time on a 110 gram canister uh, of somewhere around if I remember correctly, uh, 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, so I can basically go, you know, I've used it for eight minutes this day, I've used it for 10 minutes this day to kind of gauge uh, how much fuel is left. And obviously, you know, you can shake it around, feel the weight and that type of thing. But at the end of the day, uh, for longer backpacking trips, um, if I have to go in for a resupply, you know, this is gonna get thrown away because of the fact that I'm gonna have to pick up another one. Um, I don't know how much fuel is left in here. I'm not going to drag this thing around if it's only got a little bit left because it's pointless. And then I've got to drag it around until I can throw it away. So to me, it's just, it, it's always been an inconvenience. I've never really liked it. But like I said, for camping, uh, for, I'm in an area where there is, you, we can't have fires. You know, this is a great option. Uh, or if I just want to warm up some coffee or something, you know, really quickly uh, versus trying to cook it on an open fire. So uh, that's just my take. Like I said, this is a Snow Peak Light Max, um, and this is a Snow Peak Giga Power 110 gram uh, canister for it. Um, when you do the math on it, you've got about 10 ounces right here between the fuel and the stove. Um, for some people, that might be ultra light. For me, that's just not. <laughs> so that brings me to my next option or uh, next type of uh, stove that's common especially uh, for backpackers on the AT um, these are actually what's called alcohol stoves 
this is an Esbit one. Uh, this was my very first one. I've got a, a soda can one. I can't find it as well as a fancy feast. Um, most people that are backpackers will know what I'm talking about. Uh, this was my very first alcohol stove when I first started experimenting with it and using it. Uh, this is made by Esbit. Um, I think I probably paid maybe 10 or 15 bucks for it, something like that. The thing that caught my attention was, is, is, and I didn't know better at the time, was this was, is a type of fuel regulator, or in other words, a way of decreasing or increasing your temperature. So I figured it would make things maybe a little easier for cooking on. Uh, this actually screws off. Uh, then you've got this top on it. Um, so that way when you're, if you still have fuel in here, this top will keep the fuel inside. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about spilling it um, and wasting your fuel after every use. So, as I started going ultra light, I started realizing this really serves no purpose. So I got rid of that and I just started using this. Uh, the way this works is, is that you're just going to fill this up. Um, as you fill it up, you're going to probably, with this one, if I remember correctly, I need on average about an ounce and a half of fuel in order to cook what I, somewhere between uh, two, or I'm sorry, in order to boil somewhere between two to maybe uh, three cups of water. Uh, to me, it's not very fuel efficient. Um, it was one of my first alcohol stoves. Uh, it did, you know, what I needed it to do at the time, but I realized that there were still lighter options and I decided to go with something that was lighter. And so then I went with this. Uh, this I bought from Chiwiz. Uh, he sells both of these things as well as this. And I'll kind of explain everything in a second. Uh, this is the alcohol stove. It's not screwed on all the way tight, but uh, good thing about this is, is that, you know, it's, I think this is carbon felt. Uh, so when you fill this up, uh, even if you've got some leftover fuel in here, you can screw the top on and that will keep it from leaking as well as wasting fuel. Uh, the thing that I liked about this was obviously when you compare it to this to this, it's a lighter option, obviously. Uh, the other thing is, is that, this can be used for burning esbit. So not only do you have an alcohol stove, you've got a way of burning esbit. So what you can do is, is you know, throw that to the side, put your esbit in here or use this. Um, the other thing is, is that, if I remember correctly, this came with this like chicken wire or wire, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this acts as your pot stand. So you basically stick it over there put your pot on top of it and your flame's gonna come up and, and boil your water. Then what I did was I ordered this one because it was lighter and this is another pot stand. Uh, way it worked is, or way it works is you stick it in here like this, stick it over your burner, stick your pot on top of it and you're good to go. Um, one of the reasons why I no longer use this is because I've had a couple of situations where I was kind of stepping over my pot and I guess I probably shouldn't have been doing it on the ground. I probably could have had it elevated somewhere where it wasn't on the ground, but I stepped over it and because it's not very thick, um, I had a tendency to knock my pot over like that. Um, so I wasn't really a big fan of it. Um, yeah, it's a lightweight option. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about Chi Wiz's products. I think they're all great. Uh, it just didn't work for me. Uh, so, you know, I decided that there had to be another option. Um, so I went with this. Well, actually I still use this, uh, but that's when I started transitioning into Esbit. And this is something else that she was sells on this site. Uh, this basically is gonna hold your pot stand like this. You're gonna open it up and this is gonna serve as your ground cover. So, and, and this is what's actually going to be used for your, your esbit. This is a piece of titanium, and all you do is you press it open like that, put your esbit in, uh, put it on top of here, put your pot stand on top, and put your pot on top, and you're good to go. And the thing is, is that this actually has little hooks down here, so it will actually hook onto the, the little ground cover. So that way it just gives it a, a little more stability. And then stick your pot on top. Um, that worked for a while, but like I said, I, I just, I had concerns about this. Uh, like I said, I knocked it over a couple times. So I decided that I wanted to go with another option. Um, 
So I looked into this and yeah, this is actually a little bit heavier than that option. Uh, but this has worked for me and I've been happy with it. It's a titanium uh, tri-wing stove. The uh, way it works is you just pull the wings out on it. Like this. Um, put your esbit inside and you're good to go. And I, I guess I probably need to rewind a little bit. I, I'm not going to do another take on this video. But for alcohol, these were like the different types of containers that I had actually used. Uh, I don't know if you can see them all. And I, I'll talk about them. Uh, this was actually one of the first alcohol containers that I had actually used. It's actually like an alcohol flask. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, you can put alcohol in here, uh, you know, alcohol fuel. So I was thinking it wasn't going to have any problems with leaking. Um, this top screws off. Uh, this, I guess, was really intended to be used as kind of like a shot glass. And so I figured because this thing screwed off uh, and there was another top, you had a lot of protection. But I realized that, you know, this thing would still leak. Yeah, I mean, I could put it in a Ziploc bag and eventually that's what I started doing, but the Ziploc bag would end up with some alcohol in it from the alcohol stoves. So I didn't really like this, plus this thing is pretty heavy uh, for what it is. Um, so I decided to look around and see if I could find some lighter options. So that led me to going with this option, which I thought was gonna be lighter. Um, but it really isn't that much lighter. If I remember correctly, the, but this holds uh, 8 ounces, uh, this holds, uh, no, maybe this holds 9 or 10 ounces, and this holds 9 or 10 ounces of fuel. Um, you know, I used this for a little while. I like that it had this, the, the little um, tip on here versus this, because with this one, when you pour it, you know, it seemed to drip and kind of drip all over this thing, and so I just didn't like it. I liked having a, a the tip on this one because of the fact that, you know, I could squeeze it in, uh, have more control over my alcohol and determining how much I was pouring in. So, you know, I used this for a little while, but I figured there had to be something lighter, and I wanted something that was going to be able to fit in my cook pot. And at the time, um, I was using a Snow Peak 700 which I don't use anymore because it's, I, I've actually gone and picked lighter options. But this would actually fit in here. Obviously it sticks up a little bit. I just wouldn't put the top on, um, but I could easily fit two fuel bottles and everything else that I needed uh, for my cook system at the time that I was using this. Um, you know, I could easily fit this in there and, and a couple other things. So at the time, you know, this was a better option than using this. Um, or this because that's going to stick out. So I was using these for a little while. Um, and then I decided, you know what, these are still, you know, if I'm trying to go ultra light, I need to figure out a way to make this a little bit lighter. Um, so I went with this, this is just a little water bottle. Um, I want to say it weighs like 0 0.2 ounces, maybe 0 0.1. It has absolutely no weight. Uh, if you can see on here, it holds eight fluid, fluid ounces of water. So you equate to eight fluid. So after that, I just decided that I was going to experiment with Esbit cubes um, on backpacking light forums. Uh, I'd actually seen that people were recommending these as a, a lighter alternative to using those other options. Um, this is actually a, a box of Esbit for those that may not be familiar with it. Uh, it comes with 12 pieces. This, the, or each one of these is a total of 15 grams. Uh, when you do the weight on that, it's, if I remember correctly, 0 0.55 ounces uh, per tab. When you look at, and for those that aren't familiar with it, this is what each of the Esbit cubes look like. The uh, way that it works is you just break this off, uh, take one of these out, uh, light this, and then put it in your fuel holder, and that's what's going to heat your cook pot up. A couple of things. One is is that once you actually use your fuel, you really don't have anything that you have to carry. Like for instance, with the canister stove, you don't have a canister you have to carry around. Uh, with the alcohol stove, you don't have to worry about carrying alcohol fuel bottles around. You know, you've got this little bit of plastic or whatever you want to call it left 
and you know you throw it away but you're not carrying all that excess weight so basically you know when you look at consumables in terms of ultralight backpacking uh, you know this is truly a consumable because you're using the weight versus when you look at a canister stove yeah you're using the four ounces or whatever ounces of fuel but you still have the canister that you're carrying around which is additional weight that you're carrying so uh, I transitioned to these and you know for me this is what I use if I was on the through hike yeah this would not be practical unless I'm doing uh, you know mail drops um, but when you look at it most people are going to use alcohol uh, a lot of people use uh, fuel canisters just because it's more accessible uh, you know these things are becoming a lot more accessible now but if I wasn't doing mail drops this would definitely not be something that I would use I would probably be using more of uh, alcohol stoves just because it's more readily available. But the benefits of this, uh, even when I do long distance backpacking, you know, I can carry a lot of this. Um, one of the the way that I actually cook is I don't cook breakfast in the morning. Uh, I know some people use do oatmeal and, and things like that, but for me, that just I, I get up and go in the morning, so it's not something that I really worry about. Uh, so all I need is one of these tabs for each night and that gets me through each day. So in other words, uh, when I cook, I normally cook, you know, two, a cup and a half to two cups of water, a bowl, a cup and a half to two cups of water, which is enough for my freezer bag cooking or if I'm doing a mountain house or pasta side or any of those type of things. Uh, and I still have enough fuel where I can actually still warm up, uh, you know, whether it's hot cocoa um, a cup of soup or some tea or something like that to have a hot beverage before bed. So basically I can cook a meal, have a hot drink and do that all on one of these. And each one of these 15 gram cubes, like I said, it weighs 0 0.55 ounces or something like that. So you're basically talking about half an ounce of fuel per day in order to, you know, cook a hot meal every night. And that suits my needs. You know, if you do the math on that, a uh, perfect example, uh, five days you're looking at roughly about two and a half ounces of fuel uh, if I go with an alcohol stove you know I was using on average uh, when I was using my original or my older alcohol stove I was using about an ounce and a half of fuel a day so you know five days you're looking at seven and a half ounces and then when you include the the bottle for it which is another ounce and a half two ounces you know you're, you're looking at somewhere around close to ten ounces um, versus carrying two and a half ounces uh, not to mention the fact that, you know, I, I can easily do know exactly how much I have in order to cook with. You know, I, I can look and say, okay, I've got three of these left. I've got three days left. I can look and see I've got 10. I've got 10 days left. Uh, the other thing is, is that with the cook system that I use, uh, I can easily fit eight of these cubes in there. And, you know, I'm going to do a gear review video on my, my ultralight cook system, but I can easily fit a lot of these in this pot. Uh, which makes it so that you know everything I need to cook my meals is all inclusive It's all in this pot. So it's all in one place uh, Versus if I go with an alcohol stove uh, I still got to figure out a way to put my fuel bottle somewhere else, which is going to take up more space um, You know, I use very low volume packs very lightweight packs and because of that uh, Volume in real estate is very important to me. So I take that into consideration, too So, you know, those are just my personal reasons for using Esbit. Um, on average, I can get somewhere around 12 to 14 minutes of burn time. Uh, obviously, season is going to play a, a, an impact on that elevation, uh, temperature, and those type of things. But for me, you know, it does what I need it to do. Um, I've been very happy. And like I said, if I wasn't doing like a through hike or a long, long hike where I need to do a lot of constant resupplies, uh, this would definitely not be something that I would consider. Uh, but for, you know, doing section hikes where I might be gone for two weeks or for a week, you know, this is definitely a great option. If you have any kind of questions or concerns, please feel free to ask, uh, comment below, uh, like, and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Sean Ryu.